Hi, I'm Javis Lewis, and today we're going to create an in-app purchase for iOS. This is something that Apple claim is one of the most popular and most successful revenue models on the App Store in 2013 and 2014. Uh, sadly, they've made it so super complicated to implement that I don't know, we just need to have a little chat about that. It's not that complex when you once you get the hang of it, but uh, for newcomers this is a total nightmare and it took me many, many weeks and months to implement this successfully in my first app. So I'm going to show you today what I've learned. In this course we're going to create a single view application. There's nothing special about it, it's just going to have two buttons. Uh, one of them is there to buy the full version. So once we press that, the user can buy the full version. We're not really going to do much with it, we're just going to change a label, that's as much as our full version can do, but it'll demonstrate the concept. So as soon as we do that and the user agrees to say, yes, I'd like to purchase your app for $9 million, the App Store is then asked for a payment, and then the App Store gets back to our app via a delegate method, and that tells us, yep, that payment went through OK, and we can go and unlock the full version. That's a basic overview of what's happening in in-app purchases. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to create, with our single view application, we're going to create our own shop class, and we do that so that we can reuse it later in other apps, where that shop class can then be called from another class, so we're going to implement a delegate in our own shop class, and this, I'm going to explain this to you step by step, there's nothing to be afraid of. To kick things off with making a purchase, we're going to create an SK products request and start it. This is a part of StoreKit, SK is for StoreKit, and that's going to kick things off. The App Store is going to get notified and we're asking, hey, I'm requesting product XYZ, is that available? And then the App Store is going to get back to us uh, via a delegate and it will say, yes it is, and this is the description and this is the price. We then go and build our store UI. So in our example, this is just going to be a simple UI alert view that we're going to bring up with that description and the title of our in-app purchase straight from iTunes Connect. And we're going to present that with buttons that say, uh, yep, yeah, please purchase this for whatever it is, 99 cents or $699. Or no thanks, I'll do this later. And we're also going to talk about how to restore purchases. That's all going to be handled by that same UI. So once the user says, yes, I'd like to buy this, then we're going to create an SK payment and add it to the SK payment queue. That's a singleton method that just gets called and we're going to add a payment to it that's basically in, in English. That means, hey, App Store, please take this payment. The App Store then is going to get back to us a second time and this needs to be implemented in something like the app delegate. We're going to implement it in the app delegate because it needs to be an omnipresent observer that is constantly listening to a transaction that the App Store gets back to us with and says, hey, I've got this transaction, I've just taken payment from the customer, please go ahead and unlock the full version. Or even to tell us, hey, there was something wrong. And we do that by implementing the SK transaction observer protocol, really, uh, and react to what the App Store tells us. Okay, this is a lot to take in, I know, and I'm pretty much following an article that I've written that I'll reference at the bottom of this video. The tools that we're going to use for this is Xcode 5.1, and before you ask, yes, we're going to do all this in Objective-C. It's not going to be Swift quite yet. Swift has just been announced this week, uh, so it's a little early for me to do tutorials on that. Besides, it's still under non-disclosure agreement. So, uh, we're going to do this so that it works on iOS 7.1, and it will also work under iOS 6, which is good news if you want to support older devices. What we're also going to need is an app ID with an existing product and to test this we need an iTunes Connect test user account. Now, what that is is something that lets us connect to the App Store as if it was for real but no money will change hands so you can test as many times as you like. And because the iOS simulator doesn't have the App Store on it we're going to have to test this with a real device. Sounds good? Let's get going with this. First, I'd like to discuss what we need to do before we even 
get our hands on the code. We need to set something up in iTunes Connect and in Member Center. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to create a provisioning profile. I've already got mine set up, but I will tell you exactly where that is. I've also, by the way, if you've watched my iCloud course, uh, that is explained there as well. If you want to, if you have any questions about how to create a provisioning profile, that's explained in the iCloud course. We're also going to need an explicit app ID. Uh, usually if you set up a brand new app ID, it already comes with Game Center and in-app purchases enabled, so we don't have to do any messing there, but it needs to be one that you can link to. And the reason for that is that we have to basically create a brand new app in iTunes Connect, complete with screenshots and dummy artwork. And that app needs a proper app ID. This is so that your app can talk to the App Store and to Apple's backend system, and so that the iTunes Connect system or the App Store can send those messages back that your app can listen to. We also need to create, aside from our app, we need to create an in-app product and set a price and a title and a description. And we even need to provide a screenshot for that. Don't get discouraged by all that. It's called the in-app purchase paradox, I believe. Erica Sadoon called this once. And yeah, it's, you have to do this, otherwise the iTunes Connect isn't ready to communicate with your app. So before we get our hands dirty with any coding, this is what we're going to do. We'll surf the web and set all that up.